Madam Attorney. Madam Speaker, I move that Bill 22 now be read a second time. Please proceed. Madam Speaker, we are proposing to issue a limited number of liquor licenses to sell 100% BC wines from grocery store shelves, and we know that there's a strong interest in these licenses. With a limited number of licenses available, the proposed auction will ensure an awarding mechanism that is fair and transparent to, and transparent to industry and taxpayers alike. The auction will limit applicants to, for this license to the successful bidders and raise additional revenue for government. To be clear, we are not selling liquor licenses. We are auctioning the right to apply for a license. In the interest of fairness and transparency, the bill sets out how the auction will be conducted, who can bid, and the type of license a successful bidder may apply for. These new licenses cannot be issued without legislative authority since the sums raised through the auction process are considered a direct tax. After the auction, successful bidders will proceed through the license application process normally. Member Frank of Point Grey. Speaker, uh, in contrast to my remarks on the last bill, I'm going to be more detailed in my remarks on this bill because this is a bill that is so uh, offensive and so boldly hypocritical, Honourable Speaker, uh, it's hard to know where to begin with it. Let's be really, really clear about what this bill does. It introduces an indeterminate number. You heard very clearly the minister said a limited number, but what, what is that? Uh, we don't know. An indeterminate number of new special liquor retail licenses with special powers and benefits only available to grocery stores. But not just any grocery store, honorable speaker, but only to the deepest pocketed, biggest corporate grocery store chains in the province. Now, I asked the minister's staff during the briefing how many licenses would be issued under this legislation. And they could not answer the question, saying more policy work needed to be done. And this is the bill that the government presents to us today and expects us to stand and support. The licenses created by this bill enable the new license holders to buy alcohol at reduced rates, not to pay for the alcohol until a customer buys it and exempts the holder from the requirement not to locate within one kilometer of an existing store. In other words, Honourable Speaker, a competitor that gets product cheaper can order it without paying for it until it sells, can use this license to sell alcohol right next door to an existing public or private liquor store thanks to the Minister's bill. This is the bill that the Minister presents to us today and expects us to stand in support. This bill creates two tiers of retailers, one with every advantage that can locate their stores anywhere in the province, and the second tier that pays more for their product, pays up front, and is subject to strict location rules. Even worse, not only is this government punishing small business by creating a tilted playing field in favor of new license holders created by this bill, but only the biggest grocery store chains with the deepest products, the deepest pockets, will be able to participate in the proposed method of distributing these very, very special licenses because they will be sold at auction at prices that are well beyond the reach of family and independent grocery stores. Family and independent grocers need not apply. This is the bill that the government presents to us today and expects us to stand in support. With the introduction of this bill, the minister has violated several commitments she made to independent and family grocery stores, private and public liquor stores and their employees, and the liquor industry as a whole not once, not twice, but dozens of times in this House and in the media. And these were commitments she made not two years ago, not one year ago, but in one case just 15 days before she introduced this bill in the House. That means that the legislation introducing these new very special licenses introduced in this House on March 26th was being written and finalized by the minister at the exact same time the minister was promising a level playing field and no new liquor locations in the province. And this is the bill she presents to us today and expects us to stand in support. The gap between what the minister said just weeks ago and the bill she's introduced in this House leaves just three possibilities. The first is that the minister doesn't understand the bill. The second is that the minister had no involvement in the drafting of this bill and nobody told her about it until two weeks before it was introduced. Or the third is that the minister simply doesn't care what she says to industry, in this house, or in the media. All of these possibilities are equally troubling. The gaps between the, what the minister has promised 
and what this bill does are significant and will hurt small business across the province. This minister promised existing liquor retail license holders that there would not be any more locations selling alcohol in this province and that they would have the ability to move into grocery stores with their existing licenses. She even set up a lottery to see who would get to move their license into a grocery store first. This bill breaks that promise. The minister promised that her reforms would create a level playing field, that all of the industry would be dealing with the same wholesale prices and the same rules, that competition would be fierce but fair. This bill breaks that promise. The minister even promised that the one kilometer rule would be enforced, protecting existing license holders and public stores from competition right next door. This promise of hers is broken by this bill too. It is truly remarkable that this minister has broken almost as many promises as she's made to industry and to the public by the introduction of one bill with 20 sections. Saying one thing and doing another may be a habit of this government, but the minister has raised that to a whole new level with this bill. Let's start by examining the minister's promise of a level playing field for liquor retailers in BC. If this minister promised the retail liquor industry in BC just one thing, it was that she would be creating a so-called level playing field for all retailers so that all retailers could compete fairly head to head. This bill eviscerates any promise of a level playing field on several levels. It creates a new set of licenses with profound advantages for corporate grocery store chains that can afford to buy them at auction. This is the special Wine Store License Auction Act, and these licenses are special indeed. I've already talked about how there's no level playing field between grocery stores. These licenses will only be available to the biggest, richest corporate chains. Family and independent stores are out of luck. But the licenses this bill creates also makes a cruel joke of the minister's repeated promises that she is creating a level playing field for the public and private retailers in the province. The special privileges this bill provides to the deep-pocketed big corporate grocery store chains that can afford the huge price tags that these licenses will attract include some remarkable privileges indeed. A holder of these licenses will be able to purchase BC Wine and Cider at a cheaper price than any other retailer in the province, except for VQA licenses held by wineries in the BC Wine Institute. Expert wine, lo wine lawyer Mark Hicken told the Vancouver Sun on March 26, 2015, quote, the discount model the VQA stores operate under is a 30% discount. 26% goes to the operator of the store and 4% goes to the Wine Institute. He explained that grocery stores that hold these VQA licenses and the licenses that are issued under this bill will enjoy this discount. I have the email, Honourable Speaker, sent by the BC Wine Institute to existing VQA license holders dated March 5, 2015, that says unambiguously, quote, BC VQA store license agreements may remain in place, including the discount model, unquote. What great news for BC's biggest and richest corporate grocery stores. They'll get their products cheaper than anybody else. This is this minister's level playing field. It's worth going through how many times this minister promised a level playing field in this house and elsewhere. March 5th, 2015, 21 days before this bill was introduced in question period. Quote, the question of wholesale price, of course, relates to the issue of a level playing field. There's been extensive consultation with industry, webinars put on by our staff, People understand the concept now for the 1st of April, and it's a good system that levels the playing field for everyone. Another quote, as I mentioned, we have been in very close contact working with the industry, both on the retail and on different forms of retail. We're working closely with the industry. They've asked for a level playing field. This is the level playing field, along with all the other changes that we are making in the liquor industry in BC to support consumers, to support producers. Another quote, the same day, Quote, these came out of a very extensive policy review. They come out of very extensive consultations. The desire for a level playing field in British Columbia. These are very good changes indeed. 16 days, March 10, 2015, 16 days before this bill was introduced. Question period, quote, one of the strong pieces that came out of that was the desire of industry, of retails, for a level playing field. This is what we are doing with the new wholesale pricing, which will come into effect on the 1st of April. We are committed to a level playing field. That's where we're going on April 1st. Quote, this is a level playing field. 
It comes into force with all the other changes that government is making, some starting on April 1st, and many of which are implemented already. March 11th, 2015, 15 days before this bill was introduced, just two weeks before she stood in the House and introduced this bill in question period, quote, let me remind the member opposite that this is a wholesale price. Everybody is paying the same wholesale price. No more discounts, unquote. Another quote, that is the scheme starting on April 1st. Everyone will pay that price. The rural agency stores, the government stores, the private stores, the wine stores. That is what a wholesale price is. Everyone pays the same price. Level playing field starting on April 1st. Another quote, this is the change that's happening on April 1st. It's a change welcomed by industry. It's the level playing field that people have been asking for for many years. It joins all the many other changes we've been making in liquor policy review, and they are good changes. And then final, finally, Honourable Speaker, what we have done, Madam Speaker, is change the whole system so that it is a single wholesale price that purchasers, that retailers will be paying. This is the level playing field that we are embarking on April 1st. Honourable Speaker, this is not a level playing field. The minister also promised there would not be an increase in the number of liquor outlets in BC. She promised this just 37 days before this bill was introduced. Now, there are two reasons why it's not necessarily in the public interest to increase the number of liquor outlets in the province. The first is a business concern for existing public and private businesses. Many private business owners rely on a predictable value for their license to borrow money from the bank to expand their business or to bring in new stock. This bill creates great uncertainty about the value of existing licenses in the province. How much less are they worth? Banks aren't sure. And I've already been contacted by several uh, independent liquor stores unable to borrow because banks and credit unions are troubled by the uncertain value of these businesses given the minister's reforms. And it looks like the bankers were right to look at the minister's promises critically. Even though the minister promised certainty to the sector with no new locations, she has completely undermined that promise. We won't hear from the public store managers or the BC government store CEO about what the minister promised them, but surely it was the same thing. Business plans were made on both the private and the public side based on what the minister said, and perhaps even agreements in principle with grocery stores for moving into those stores that have now been completely undermined by the promise of an unclear number of new licenses with special powers. A private store owner wrote to me expressing concern, quote, as private owners, we have a right to know how many of these licenses are being created, quotes, and sold. We also have a right to know who is bidding and where they want to locate. It would directly impact our business, so we have a right to know. The minister makes an announcement of no new locations for liquor, liquor retail in the province, a promise that public and private business and employees should reasonably be able to rely on in making plans, and within 37 days, she's already contradicted it with this bill and she won't even say how many new licenses she's issuing under this legislation. How could any business operate in that uncertain legislative environment? I'm told investment in private stores is at a standstill as they await the latest bombshell from the minister's office. I have no idea what the impact of the minister's constant policy reversals have been on plans made on the public side, but I can't imagine they're any more positive. And in fact, redrawing plans made on the minister's reversals on that side are even more problematic because that is public money being spent to react to reversals made on the fly. There's also an important public health argument to be made against additional uh, liquor outlets, increasing access to alcohol in the province. Easier access to alcohol through increased locations increases the possibility of the purchase and consumption of alcohol, which increases alcohol-related harms that cost the public purse. I don't recall that British Columbians asked for the moratorium on new locations to be lifted in the consultation. And I am certain that public health officers and organizations didn't ask for it either. You know, I think it's important to point out why I keep saying that the minister reversed herself with the introduction of this bill and why I believe that she's created such uncertainty in the industry and surely concern among public health officials. 37 days before this bill was introduced, February 17, 2015, in the Vancouver Sun, quote, we are not increasing the number of liquor outlets in BC so anybody who has a license is in pretty good shape, unquote. 35 days before this bill was introduced, in this house, the minister rose and said, quote, a change that is not coming is the number of liquor outlets. We have the moratorium until 2022, 
unquote. It would be hard for the minister to be clearer, and it would be harder for her unambiguous statement to be more incorrect given the bill that she has stood in this House 35 days later and introduced. Astounding, Honourable Speaker. And yet there are so many contradictions of the Attorney General's media releases, statements in this House, commitments to industry, and promises to the public. I read to this House not one, not two, not three, but ten different quotations from the Attorney General, from her speeches and answers in this House, promising a level playing field for license holders. These quotes came not two years ago, not one year ago, but as recently as 15 days before this bill was introduced. Another example of her abandoning her so-called principle of the level playing field through this bill is her abandoning of the one-kilometer rule for the deep-pocketed grocery store chains that can afford to buy the new licenses proposed by this bill. Now, for those who don't know, Honourable Speaker, the one-kilometer rule says you can't move your public or private liquor store within one kilometer of an existing store. All liquor stores are subject to this rule across the province. Now, all liquor stores, except for a handful of VQA licenses held by wineries, who needed this competitive advantage to break into the very difficult wine market internationally. There's a level playing field across BC, except where there's a principled reason to move from that until this bill. This remarkable contradiction of the so-called level playing field policy up until this bill was introduced is best demonstrated by the fact that the Attorney General set out a press release that she was holding a fair and square lottery to see who would get to move their license into a grocery store in the province. Everyone would have an equal chance to participate. As she said, if you had a license, you were in pretty good shape because there would be no more locations. She said the sleeves of the person drawing the names for the lottery would be rolled up so that there'd be no cheating. That was part of the rules that went out in the press release, evidence about how fair this process would be. I'll read to you from this press release, Honourable Speaker, and the Attorney General hopefully can explain to us where it said that she would be issuing new licenses with special privileges not subject to the one kilometre rule that could locate as soon as they were issued and purchased right beside an existing liquor store. Keep in mind that this fair and square level playing field license relocation lottery press release was issued by the Attorney General on February 26, 2015, just 23 days before this bill was introduced, with its very special licenses that don't need to follow the one kilometer rule. Quote, liquor stores throughout BC will have an opportunity to enter a lottery to determine the queue for relocations, move to other communities, or into grocery stores. The lottery system is set up to ensure fairness. Each applicant will be given an equal chance at qualifying to relocate, understanding that the one kilometer rule will continue to play a large role in the assessment and approval of applications. If more than one store wants to relocate its license within the same one kilometer radius, the first applicant chosen is given priority. The lottery system is set up to ensure fairness. Fairness indeed, Honourable Speaker. Except for the completely unfair fact that the Attorney General didn't mention in her media event that she planned to sell, had staff writing legislation to sell, new licenses that would be significantly more fair than any other licenses held by retail business owners in the province. She excluded from her press release that just 23 days later, she would introduce this bill guaranteeing that these very special wine store license privileges, exempting their holders from the one kilometer rule, would be sold to the richest and deepest pocketed grocery store chain owners and tough luck for everyone else. Here's the minister in this house speaking on March 11th, 2015, just 15 days before she introduced this bill promising a level playing field for locating licenses inside grocery stores without a single word that she would be creating new licenses that didn't have to respect the one kilometer buffer rule. Quote, let me talk about a few more of the level playing field pieces that we have coming on the 1st of April. We've got store within a store. In other words, private liquor stores can now move inside grocery stores 
so that people can do their shopping all at the same time. BC wine stores are going to be able to move into grocery stores. Again, so that you can buy your BC wine with your things that you're taking home to dinner, unquote. Now this bill makes it clear that there is no level playing field around relocating into a grocery store. One set of licenses has to be at least a kilometer away from an existing store. The other set of licenses created by this bill can be right next door to an existing store. Not even famous television contractor Mike Holmes could level the playing field renovated by this minister. To summarize the licenses issued under this bill, let the holders of these licenses buy their product at a discount on advantageous terms and locate immediately beside an existing small business or public liquor store that doesn't get the same discounted prices or favorable buying terms. For all of these reasons, the minister's bill is a sad joke for business owners across the province. It is grossly unfair to many family businesses in the grocery world and in the liquor retail world. It will close small business across the province. It hands huge advantages to some of the biggest businesses in BC at the expense of some of the smallest. It gives dis discounts to these big businesses who don't need them, while the Attorney General refuses discounts to BC restaurants who have to buy at full retail. It breaks promises made by the Attorney General to the public and to industry, not once, not twice, but dozens of times, and not years ago, but a mere 15 days before this bill was introduced. The only apparent motivation for the province issuing these unfair licenses is that it's just one more way to bring in some quick cash at the expense of small business in the province. The number of licenses the Attorney General plans on issuing? Unknown, Honourable Speaker. She says this addition of licenses will be, quote, limited, unquote. But there's nothing in this bill that limits the number of licenses to anything but the largest number the Attorney General can dream up. These licenses could be as limited addition as an upside down airplane stamp or as limited addition as the McRib sandwich. The term limited is meaningless, but the impacts on small BC businesses are well known and the minister is well aware. I received an email from another small liquor retailer, retailer this morning, Honourable Speaker. He wrote to me, quote, if I could sell my stores today, I would. But no one is sure of the value of their business in this state of chaos. Scary. I'm 46 and now looking at starting over to prepare for retirement, unquote. For all of these reasons, this side of the House will not be supporting the Minister's bill. And for all of these reasons, the members on the other side of the House should look themselves in the mirror carefully when they consider what they are doing by passing this very unfair legislation. Thank you, Honourable Speaker.